hospital, that we should always keep our spiritual fervor. Okay, so really the question is about that. We know that for years you have done this and that, and it's not easy to start also stay the work in the Lord. And really the question we're asking today is how you have managed to keep your spiritual fervor. So, I know that the work's going in, in, how many years has it been for you, sir? So, in terms of um, your work with God and also in the ministry, because of course there's always a lot of matching. <laughs> okay, that goes on with it. But yes, all these years, please tell us, sir. So, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ in 1982. That was my first year in the university and, and my life has been that of a progressive revelation and God has you know, constantly just increased himself in my life as I seek to dwell in his presence and you know, talking about you know, maintaining my spiritual fervor, one thing I've always strived to do is to dwell in the presence of God because the scripture says that in his presence there is fullness of joy that if you're in that place, he renews your joy every day, that you let his word really direct your path. And I don't want to try, I don't want to reinvent the wheel, so I choose to dwell on the word of God. And even when it comes to ministry, I know many people, you know, they ask, oh, how do you combine being a doctor and being a pastor? And I tell them it's not me, because when the Lord spoke to me at the beginning, the first thing I said was, God, you see, I like being a doctor. I think by the grace of God, I've been a very good one. And I want to continue to be a good doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and God said, no, I want you to do something else. And I said, no, I can't do it. He said, well, I haven't asked you to do it. I want you to trust in me. And he led me to that scripture in Matthew um, chapter 11, verse 28. The which says, come unto me all ye that labor and are happy learning, and I will give you rest. He says, come, learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my body is light. Mm. He says, if you come to me, you will have rest for your soul. And that was the key that you know, really nicked it for me, that this wasn't for me to do. I, all I needed to do was to exchange my yoke for his. And his was an easier one. And that is all I have done. And so, I mean, people quit one time and say, oh, you're not a real pastor, you know. And because you are not undergoing the stress that we undergo, I say yes, because I'm not supposed to, because there's so many who does in every living. So that's what I'm going to Hallelujah. Could you please, ma'am, can you tell us how you've managed? I, would you like to, like to just know how many years it is you've been giving your spiritual fervor? Yes, I was saved in 1951. Whoa. Wow. Would you like to get there? Praise the Lord. And I was 20 years old wow. at that time. And at the, at the time, I wondered how I would ever live up to being a Christian. When I went home, the family called me a lunatic and whatever else they, they say to you, you know, because we were not a church family or anything. But I said to the Lord, to, I want to prove to them that you are real. And that I can be a good Christian. Yeah. And I said, please help me. Yeah. And God directed me to a verse in Romans that says, David strengthened himself on the promises of God. Yeah. On the promises God gave to Abraham, actually. And uh, from then I started reading the Psalms. And the Psalms are very, very encouraging. There's so much encouragement there. And another thing I learned then was, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I said to the Lord, how do we get holiness? I really want to worship you, I really want to know you. The Lord led me on from there. And there were various scriptures that he spoke to me over the years. And I observed other people. Mm. I observed stronger Christians. That's right. I thought to myself, well, they're moving on, God, I'm going to move on with God like that. And we all slip up from time to time. I, I did never walk back. But, you know, we all make mistakes and we all slow down and whatever. But God was there. God was prompting me. God was guiding me and stirring me all the time. And this hunger 
for God seem to develop more and more. And particularly the Psalms, I found more and more scriptures that built me up. Now, I wrote a list of the Psalms. <laughs> <laughs> I've come out with that paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Could you just tell us one or two that were yeah, really, yeah. really instrumentally encouraging? You? Yeah. I will inst oh, Psalm 32 verse 8 I will instruct you Amen. in all your ways. And Psalm 34 verse 15 The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. The eyes of the Lord are on us all, as we seek Him, and He will be our guide. And the main one you sang, you, I say sang because I used to sing it, in your presence is fullness of joy. Now, that's wonderful. Whenever, I found more and more, whenever I was in God's presence, I had fullness of joy. And God seems to have filled me with joy. It's, it's, been, it's a blessing that I've received from God. I've got this joy in my heart. I used to sing years ago, I've got the joy, 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 joy. joy, joy. I've got my heart. That will be my heart. That will be my heart. Joy, 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 joy. That will be my heart. 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 But I also wanted to know love. I wanted to love people. Mm -hmm. and, and I wanted to, uh, the Lord gave me that. The Lord gave me love. I was out with a lady one day. This day, I said to the lady, see that person over there? I said, I think I know her. And she said to me, I was just praying for her. I learned a lot from that. Mm -hmm. I learned that God wants us to look upon the needs of people. We see people and they're struggling or shorts or anything. Look upon them. And just say a little prayer while you're passing by. And that was how I learned love. And I give God glory and praise. Yeah. Thank you. Praise the Lord. So we learned about learning God's presence, learning to love, enjoying His word, and, and so on. And really, it also it's a gift, praise God, and it's a gift that we have to nurture and look after. Thank you, lawyer, chief justice, <laughs> pastor. <I'm John. laughs> she wants to be the next to the court. So, <laughs> praise the Lord, man. Can you tell us? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my journey started in 1978. I became converted. Um, when you talk about God turning situations around, I think you're talking about me because God turned me around and He turned and He still continues to turn every situation around. Amen. I was sharing the story of my conversion with um, even this outfit the other day, and she was like, Wow, you need to write a book about this. And the more I tell it, you know, the more. How can I call it? Maybe fearful, grateful, amazed I am of what God has done. And shortly after I gave my life to Christ, I was catapulted into the immediate family. And as you know, it's the family of service, serving the Lord. So I was serving the Lord with my late husband for so many years. And then independently, I was sent to head. Um, a branch of the church so I became a minister in my own right I think that was in 2003 and then we became freestanding if you like canine church in 2008 what has kept me going over the years the love of God Amen. the amazing love of God when we talk of the love of God look I can I could talk of it forever because in so many ways God has shown me his love, his grace, his goodness. And also the word 
I feel God so close to me because he speaks in so many ways. I'm not one of those who prophesy and whatever. But I always say to people, if God wants you to know anything, he will bring it to you. Each time I pick the Bible, you know the way God speaks to me. Sometimes when I go to church and I share, people are like amazed. And I see things coming to fruition. So it's not a question of you are fantasizing or you are just imagining. I see when God speaks, I see it coming to coming into place. And that has kept me growing. Amen. When situations get tough, I always remind God. But remember this. But Lord, you said this to me. So it's been my guiding light. And God has been amazing. Mm. I always say to people, because I represent people and people who live in challenging situations, I've come to realize through representing them that we all have a coping mechanism. There is nobody who doesn't have a coping mechanism. For some people, it's alcohol, drugs, it's, you know, gambling, it's, you know, association, whatever you call it. And I always say to people, God is my coping mechanism. Prayer is my coping mechanism. You have to have something in your life. If you don't have something in your life, you'll be knocked down by everything. That's right. And I thank God that I have him in my life. And I thank God for the upbringing, spiritual upbringing I received. Because it does not matter what has happened in the last few years. I cannot discountenance, you know, that straight spiritual upbringing that I received. And it kept us going. It kept my children going. As a family, in the last 11 years, we have faced so many challenges. But when I look at how we've been able to go, I said, Lord, I just want to thank you. All the years of baptism of fire, it's been amazing. Anybody who wants to walk with the Lord, you can't despise his discipline. You've got to discipline yourself. Because all the promises, when you walk through the waters, through the fire, through whatever, the easy one we cook them. But in real life, believe me, they are not that easy. But when you trust God, it's an amazing God. And the other thing that has helped me to cope is friendship. Friendship, the love of people. The love of LJM in the last 11 years, you've been amazing. You've been there for us. And I want to thank you for that. I've had some amazing friends in ministry. Even one of them is here today, Pastor Reggie Mibe. You know, he was just coming to the big church at the time. But when our challenge came, he was one of those pastors that stood so close and they still stand so close. I have been able to cope to keep going because I've got amazing children who are serving the Lord with me. They have stood by me. Wherever we are going, we go together. It's not been easy. But, uh, you know, we try so many things. Sometimes we fail, sometimes things work out, sometimes things don't work out. It's good to have people that you can talk to. People that sing from the same hymn sheet. Amen. So that friendship in Christ has been amazing. And I'm so grateful to God for it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor John. Yes. <laughs> How have you kept your spiritual fervor throughout these years? Tell us. Just like everybody here, uh, I got saved in 1972 and uh, I was invited to a small church and you know I just love riding with my senior brother to the church and he took me one of the worst they meeting and I gave my life to God. One of the things that has kept me going is the, uh, the vision about heaven. Um, as a young person, when I gave my life to God, I was given a vision of heaven. And that vision of heaven, I love it so much that I want to be there. Amen. So therefore, it keeps me uh, right. the drive. Yes. It's the motivation. Amen. It's everything that has been the drive in my life, if you put that word. And then the second thing is the Word of God. 
again I learned to love the word of God from my pastor and my pastor's wife <laughs> and from this church and you wouldn't believe it in 1981 82 I was given the responsibility to lead what we call Bible quiz every Friday or Wednesday I can't remember which one and that Bible quiz section I have to go and prepare so therefore I got into the Bible to get the word to get the, uh, the quiz and to get the question and to get the answers and that is how God got hold of me and the word of God becomes the central uh, uh, part of my focus and then finally, you know, it may surprise you that all of us will have to make a determination yes. uh, to focus on Jesus. Uh, because if you focus on circumstances, circumstances change. If you focus on your anything else, change. Uh, so, that is one of the most important words that I can say yes. on my side. Uh, to play my part, I have to focus on the pioneer and the finisher of our faith. And that is Jesus himself. So instead of focusing on my ability, or focusing on my congregation, or focusing on my job, or focusing on wife, or focusing on children, I have learned that the only person I can focus on that can get me to the end is Jesus himself. And that is the reason why I've been uh, in the Lord. I could have quit something, I could have changed something, but because he never changed, yesterday, today, tomorrow is the same. Uh, you will not say I love you today and then tomorrow say I don't love you. <laughs> He never give up on us. And therefore, I focus on Him. And that has been the plan. So, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. So, we've all heard the secrets of keeping our spiritual faith uh, fervor. Keeping our eyes on the Lord Jesus. Focusing on Him and making and wanting to get to heaven and recognizing that it's not an easy way to get there. So having the discipline of, you know, to press on. Also, being surrounded by people who will encourage us. And can I say that part of that is being willing to be exalted and to be admonished. That's what the, 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 the book tells us. It to be encouraged, okay. And to have examples that we follow. Also, to rest in the Lord and to recognize that he's the one who's going to get us there so we don't rely on ourselves and get stressed and also to keep his word in our heart to to feed on his word to love his word all these things they take application it doesn't just happen automatically so if we want to keep our spiritual fervor we have to work at it okay we have to pray we have to spend and put the time in but you know what? God wants us to keep our spiritual fervor. And if we're willing to put the work in, He will keep us burning for Him till the end. God bless you. And thank you very much for sharing. Praise the Lord.